first consideration before any job is health and safety. We've been coming along here to Timo Lime in Brecon for many years and lots of our students are training in various skills. Our main role here is producing materials, we like making things, we like producing materials. So we, we produce lime mortars, plasters and renders. Um, we analyse mortars so we can replicate mortars for people. We uh, produce and supply a whole range of different paints for different situations. Um, and also we, we run a consultancy where uh, we'll, we'll write reports uh, as to how we feel would be the best way to uh, overcome uh, problems, how to um, uh, to work, what to do on the building and, and importantly what not to do on the building. An architect can specify all the materials, that is totally useless unless you've got the person on site who's understanding what they're doing, understanding the materials they're using and how they repair it. I think, I think this is so much about a passion in the hands and the hearts and the eyes of, of the people doing it. And that's what you want to do, you want to try and say there's opportunity here. In Wales, there is the largest concentration of pre-1919 buildings anywhere in Europe. And they're all solid wall construction. They're all this sort of technology. And this is the stuff that we need to be protecting. For 50 years, we've actually been doing a certain amount of harm to it. In the past, um, construction and skills were deemed as really important things. So, you know, when we had buildings like cathedrals or manor houses or castles being built, the masons, the carpenters, joiners that were doing this were really well regarded. It's that kind of sense of bringing your uh, skills back into your work and not just thinking I'll oh, just turn up to site, do a bit of plastering and leave. Um, you kind of invest your time, your knowledge into what you're doing to create a better building a better environment for people in the future. Uh, so there's a, a huge demand for training um, not only in Wales but across the UK um, and I think there's been a lot of politicians, a lot of groups across Wales which have been demanding the return of these skills. It's great to see in terms of school kids getting people interested at such a young age. We invited um, teachers and college lecturers to come on a course and then they went back to their own colleges and further education um, establishments and then started teaching their kids and setting up courses. So it's been a really success story. Uh, CO2, so we're putting energy in, we're burning it, which has a cost, we're driving off water and we're driving off carbon dioxide.
This has been burned. It's been fired. So it's taken our calcium carbonate and converted it to what's the next bit? Calcium oxide. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this in here. Bob, so. uh, stand back a little bit. Stand back. It's going well. So that's that's 100 over 100 degrees. Right. So over 100 degrees. So it's to turn that water into steam. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, because we've added water to calcium oxide, we've gone from calcium oxide to hydroxide. So now we've got, having added water to it, we've got that, Salt. which is lime putty. And if we mix that with water, a lot of water, you make lime washes, you make paints. That's what's on the wall there. If you take that and you mix it with sand, you make mortar or plaster or render and if you take that and you add fibre to it as well then you make plasters that are bound together with fibre as well. Cow, cow hair. Cow hair. But it's what it does. Cows on it's, 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 Sorry? Cows on Abbey. Yeah they do, they come yeah. Pigs have a little bit though, it's got like coarser. But it's what it's like a carpet isn't it? Mm. All that fibre helps to, to hold it together, to make it like a carpet. So this is um, what's known as reed mat, and you can plaster onto that. If you put plaster through and it's got fibre in it, the fibres go through and they hold it. Yeah. And that means if you've got it on a ceiling, for instance, and people are walking on the ceiling and it's moving, uh, it gives it more flex, yeah. This a, what's known as a screeding sand. These are sieves. So this is a range of sieves. I'll give this a shake and then you can see what it is. These are graded. So what you have... First sieve is 3.75 mil. Basically everything smaller than that size falls through. How small can we get? Technically speaking, teeny tiny. He's gone out, he's gone out. No. Don't drop it. No. Come on. So, that's so what, what happens with. is the gaps in those are filled with those, which are filled with those, which are filled with those, filled with those. So you end up with the sand. If you, you know, like on a, on, a, on a beach, if you're trying to build a sandcastle. Yeah. The best sand binds together because it has this grading. So all those particles are able to interlock. So without any binder in it, without any cement in it, without any lime in it, it's able to hold together. Because all those particles lock together. Often you find with sea sands, which is a sort of normal building sand because they can dredge it, they can bring huge quantities in really cheaply, the grading is often single size. So it's, it's not very good for building. Do you notice looking at that, that sand? It's quite, it's, it's quite pebbly as well. Pebbly, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's another thing we need to look at in the sand, it's its angularity, whether it's sharp or it's soft. A sharp sand is something that's quite angular, it locks together. If you try and plaster with a really sharp sand, it's, it's quite brittle and then it doesn't, it, it grates together, but it, it, it will lock. If you use a very soft sand, which is very rounded, it flows nicely, but it doesn't have much strength. So you've got grading, which is one thing we're looking for. You've got sharpness or softness of the sand, but you've also got colour. If you look at that, you've got like the white bits, you've got green bits, you've got red bits. 
And that also helps to, the, to look at the, the, the text, the colour of the mortar. So we've got our binder, which is lime, and we've got the aggregates that we mix together. In mixing terms, the difference to, between cement and lime is that you need to mix lime for 20 minutes. If you don't mix it for 20 minutes, it won't absorb all the water, and whatever you do with it, it will shrink and crack, and it won't be very good. So you have three of this sand, which is much more coarse. It's got some pebbly bits in it, and you can hear it. That's actually what we call a bit of a crunchy sand. So that means it's, it's very sharp and very angular, and it's got a bigger part of the larger size bits of sand in it. And so we'll, do, we'll, we'll show you that you can build with this, you can point with and this, tomorrow. and you can yeah. render. Yeah. And, use it tomorrow. and use it tomorrow. That's yeah. good. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. Okay. Environmentally, that's good because it's reabsorbed carbon dioxide. ISG are our main sponsor in the traditional side of it. This is a specialist area, uh, as in heritage skills, uh, which are the many occupations within heritage, such as dry stone walling, building stone walls, lime render, uh, paint using various colours um, within the paint for lime washing, thatching, uh, tiling uh, using stone tiles, uh, tiling slating uh, using Welsh slate. There are so many different areas uh, within the heritage that you as a school or centre can access and replicate. So that was the new, that's the new one you bought? Mm -hmm. Quarter to one. Is that? Mm -hmm. None of them barriers. No, no, the oldest one's been. <laughs> it was lovely. I think the idea of our built heritage and our uh, built environment are really important in terms of this creating a sense of identity. And it doesn't have to be a very uh, important manor house, it can be as simple as a little cottage or a row of terraces. This gives people a much greater pride in where they're living and also then a care for one, not only the community but their surroundings that they're living in. And it's just understanding the way in which these buildings were constructed and how they were lived in in the past to understand that they are can be fit for purpose in the 21st century. And that's what this is about, I think. It's about 
understanding the quality of the workmanship. So when you're doing walls out there, when you're doing the stone work, it's understanding how that stone work goes together. It's not just a question of throwing it in. It's a question of good, good quality workmanship. So that's what's key. It, 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 it's the, the, the hands and the, the eyes and the, uh, uh, and the heart of the person doing the job and understand what they're doing, which is so much more important than the specification. So there is a massive amount of work out there and I think the process of, um, the helpful process of, of, of being a builder and adding value to, to the work that you do by slowly unpicking the right direction for the building um, actually is a really nice process. For the WJC qualification, uh, there are nine building areas uh, that you can access, heritage being one of them, because there's so many different skill areas in heritage, which you could adapt to your own school or your own centre, a team online. They would come in and mainly deal with preserving and repairing, maintaining old buildings, pre-1919 buildings, of which there are a lot in South Wales, and you as a school or centre would be very exciting if you could bring Heritage in as one of your units. Now this wouldn't have been possible without Kimberley Mackenzie who is for a local, uh, local authority, RCT local authority and through the Heritage Lottery Fund which sponsored this and, and funded this two day training event. So I suggest that any schools may contact um, some outside providers, the Heritage Lottery for instance, to see whether they would be able to fund a training event here at Timo Light. Cherish the past, adorn the present, construct for the future.